What is the structure of the drug cartel and how do you move up in the in this world? I'm gonna explain that. Cartel got me working for the big faces. Federally got my car full of brick cases. Hit the pin with a grin, there ain't no faking. I was picked to my back for my shoelaces. Got out, should have seen the look on they faces. All jealous cause your boy stacking hella paper. Set up by the crew, they done put a banger in the trunk of my car and left me to hang there. No thing, then attorney went and beat the case. Got a job digging holes for minimum wage. Had a dream that Cato said he proud of me. Stay here, don't leave, keep doing your thing. Quit the drugs, but you know I. Went back to selling, six time failing. I went back to prison, got my head right, got my bread right. Push these weights like a kilo in a tailpipe. Trying to do right, I got a mission. Trying to get back to my boys in the prison. The old me's gone, I ain't never gonna miss them. From wrong to strong, stay true to the vision. From wrong to, to strong, from wrong to strong, from wrong to, to strong, from wrong to, to strong. From wrong to strong. What's up, family? My name is JC. You guys already know I am Ron Strong. If you are new to my channel, make sure you subscribe, hit that bell button so you don't miss nothing. And if you are part of Ron, Ron Strong Familia, welcome back, Raza. You guys ready? Let's get into the suburban. The ladder to be someone in the drug cartel. In no way or form am I telling you to go fill out an application and work with these guys because it's not worth it. I'm only sharing this information with you so you can use it as a learning tool and you cannot make, you don't make the dumb decisions that I made going down that path. This is all it is, is for you to understand the way that you move up in this world. Trust me, it's not all what it's cut out to be. The movies, they don't paint it how it is. So, you start at the very, very bottom. And by the bottom, I mean like the dishwasher at a restaurant. The bottom, bottom guys are the halcones, the falcons. They are the ears and eyes of the street. They are the, and they're mostly all kids because of how, you know, uh, poor it is out there in Mexico and stuff like that. So they hire these kids. They sit up on roofs, they sit on the street. Uh, it's the lowest ranking member of the cartel. They're responsible for like supervising everything that's going on, activities, everything that's going on, on on the street. You know, the police, the military, rival cartel members. They use radios, phones, uh, sounds, you know, whistles and stuff like that, even fires. If they're a couple miles down, that's what they use, a fire to let you know that the military and the army's coming in, you know, for raids and stuff like that but you know it's very very sad because these kids are very very young and that's how that's how they start their lives but you know it's, it's tradition in Mexico for kids to bring money into the home and unfortunately since the economy is not that good out that way a lot of these kids find jobs in these in these groups and you know they bring some money home to their moms or grandmothers or whoever they're living with and it is what it is man you know i started working at a very young age and it was to you know send money to my mom and just try to help out as much as i could after you've proven yourself on the streets uh they they see who's very active who's out there all the time they they keep track of all their workers uh the next step moving up is uh becoming a mule um that's how i started my my career in that in that field i started you know driving at first i started driving for somebody uh valerie was the first one that sent me and then after i i kind of earned my respect and they took a liking to me they started letting me they moved me up to manager and then from manager they started letting me send some cars of my own and i started moving up but the mule was mule is the next step the mule you know does all the runs uh it's it's uh the driving job there's 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 driving jobs that go by higher higher uh points and pretty much 
the the you start moving up in positions because if you're a driver for a lieutenant of the cartel then you've moved up you know pretty much it's it's a very it's a job that has a lot of responsibility because you're going to be uh a driver a hitman a bodyguard you're going to be pretty much uh in the trenches non-stop now if you're the driver for the boss let's just say like el chapo is one of the most highest position in the drug cartel next to uh the drug lords uh and drug lords are like i'm saying like uh, i'll give you examples like you know el chino amtrax la barbie el chapito um like those are drug lords because they they own plazas you know and um i mean you you've seen when um when uh the uh when El Chapo got arrested, he was actually with his with his left hand man, and that was his driver and bodyguard and and everything. So that's a very high driving position to have. It's one of the highest ones actually next to being a drug lord. Um, and I'll go back after being the Falcon, the Mule, then you can move into Hitman. Being the Hitman is the ones that are on the streets defending the plaza, the turf from rival groups military and it's one of the hardest jobs because you are out there at war every day with very low pay very low pay i mean last that i heard um they come you know it's they use sicarios as a term you know sicarios comes from uh back in the cali days where uh, uh the colombians and the uh you know the cartels out in south america were uh you know fighting and everything and use the term sicario if you look it up it's it's a, a form of a hitman hire for murder all that stuff but it's a term that's been used lately a lot because of uh the cartels having such a broad you know uh stuff on the news and all that stuff but uh it's one of the hardest jobs man you're out there constantly pays low like i said when i la last heard about it i think they were getting paid about a thousand bucks a month I mean, in Mexico, it's it's good to survive off of that, but it's not a lot. It's not a lot for the amount of danger and stuff that you're you're having to deal with and doing. After you've proven yourself as a hitman and you move up another rank, you move up to lieutenant. Lieutenant is the second highest position in the cartel because you're supervising the hitman, you're supervising the falcones. And you have a whole territory that you need to actually keep on check. They are the ones holding the plaza, you know, uh, and, and giving the orders and everything. And the plazas are given to them by the bosses. That That's the, the next step up. So the drug lord is the top of the chain. The drug lord, capos, however you want to call them, they are the top of the ladder. Most people don't make it there. Um, very few. I say about. 30 20 percent don't even make it to lieutenant um a lot of people end up in prison for a lifetime end up dead it's uh yeah don't most people don't make it to that ladder so if you're having fantasies of becoming a drug lord no nah, it's not gonna happen <laughs> it's the highest position in any cartel responsibility for the entire drug industry appointing territory leaders making alliances, planning high profile moves. It is, you are the CEO of the whole shebang. You are the man. And just because you are that person, you get like 63 life sentences, just like, you know, most cartel leaders do. ADX is full of them. Even, even the uh, gang leaders, same thing because of the position that you have. I mean, there's a lot of other operating factors that happen within the cartels, also known like the drug, the drug pro uh, processors, the ones that put it together, you know, put it in the cars, blah, blah, blah. The suppliers, the ones that move it. The money people, the ones that buy real estate, clean the money, launder the money. Um, and the, the last part, and actually the most important one, is the armed suppliers. But this group actually operates completely in a different circle because they're not even considered part of the cartel. <coughs> All they do is supply the weapons for the cartel. That's it, point blank. But there's a lot of factors to this. And like I said, 
I don't glamorize this lifestyle. I don't, you know, I don't think it's a, it's a good, it's a good way of life. It's not. I spent most of my life incarcerated because of it, because of chasing that dream that never actually came true. And the thing is, is that eventually you end up dead or you, or you get caught point blank. There is no, there is no other way. And you've seen some of the biggest leaders, you know, get caught and if you really want to get like technical, I mean, really the only one that hasn't been caught right now is El Mayo. I mean, there's other ones, you know, that the thing is, is that the only reason why there's other ones like the guy from the golf cartel is that they were in it before the cartel became what it became. They, they were in it when it was like bootlegging liquor and all that stuff. Not all these wars and all this cocaine and all this stuff. It was way before. So that's why they end up, you know, they were in the, in the safety zone. Now that it's a uh, uh, highlight and it's, you know, highlighted on the news and all this stuff. Because you guys got to remember, you know, if you look back, you know, 10 years ago, all you've seen on movies and, and uh, shows and all that was... Mafia, Italian Mafia, Irish Mafia. It was all Mafia, 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 Mafia. And now, if you look at, you know, even the movies being made, being made, uh, the Savage, the, I think it's called the Savages, where those two guys from California and that girl, and the uh, Tijuana Cartel, uh, Breaking Brad. Um, it, it is a new, it is a new time, and it's it, things have changed. Where it's you know, pretty much it is. The Mexican cartel uh, bringing in the drugs and all this stuff. So it's uh, times have changed. So now everything is different. Everything, the dynamics, everything. So you know the United States government is after these organizations, these groups now. You know they they classify them actually as terrorist groups now. So even though all that war and everything's happening in Mexico, they still classify them as that and they're actually hunting them down. Just like in the 80s and 90s, they hunted all the uh, South America drug lords down and now they're doing it in Mexico. So, like I said, I share this just to give you a wake up call so you guys don't end up doing the same dumb stuff I did or spending half your life in a cage because it was not worth it. My name's JC, I am Wrong to Strong and don't judge nobody. Give somebody a hug, stay in your lane, live savage, and remember, you only have one life to live, but if you live it right, one life is all you need. Check you guys on the rebound.